So in my last video, I went over the technical specifications for panel radiators, and specifically series 11 versus 21 and 22. And I showed you that they came with manual air vents and these mounting brackets right here, along with some other stuff. So in this video, I wanna go over how to actually mount the radiator and install it. And I'm also gonna go over a lot of different piping methods that you can choose for your installation so that you know which one to do if you're looking to install this and you can optimize your installation. So just to quickly go over it again, this is a series 11 right here and this is a series 21. And the difference between these is that this doesn't have a back panel. So the front of this looks exactly like this and the back of this also has a panel on it. So it has a slightly bigger BTU output and they only vary in the other way is uh, with the mounting brackets. So since this doesn't have the back panel, it can mount in a different way. But in this video, I'm gonna mount the series 21. And as you can see in this graphic, um, the difference between 21 and 22 is that 22 is made in the same way, but it's just thicker. So it has a higher BTU output than the 21. Both 21 and 22 radios can be wall or floor mounted and all brackets must be secured to studs or other supports of sufficient strength for panel radiator weight. If your radiator is above 71 inches wide, then you're gonna need two sets of these mounting brackets to mount them and your installation manual will show you how to do that. But if it's below 71 inches like these right here, one pair is fine. And it's always better, well, I like it better to put your accessories on first and then mount it. So I put the thermostatic radiator valve there. And then you need pipe adapters, like I explained in my last video, to put any sort of pipe like PEX or copper to the, the supply and return line. So you need to purchase these, they don't come with it. So I added this thermostatic sensor dial in my last video, which enables room by room zone control for optimum comfort and efficiency. And it's just very easily installed on the flow setter valve, which is right here when you purchase the radiator. And um, it's required or recommended when there's no thermostat in the room or when there's only one radiator in the room with a bathroom, walk-in closet, etc. And there are multiple radiators in the room and individual temperature control for each is desired. So those are the optimal uses where you would want one of these. So mounting the actual radiator itself is pretty simple after you get the brackets placed on. And I actually did it before the video just so I can show you what it looks like when it's done. And all you wanna worry about is that these are high enough up so that when the radiator is on your wall, it's at least four inches above the ground. Um, and so, you also have to measure that these are at least four and a quarter inch inward for the, the radiator. And once that's done, all you gotta do is make sure these are level and then you just place the radiator up onto the brackets. And they come with these bolts right here, which I didn't use just for demonstration purposes. It's easier to use this, but when you install yours, you're definitely gonna use the bolts so it's way more steady. So you simply just take your radiator and you place it onto the brackets. And then once you get behind the little brackets here you can see there's these little white tabs all you do is push them in and then you can adjust the bracket to secure the radiator so this is the supply right here and this is the return all you got to do is take these caps off and once you do you can throw them out you don't need to keep them and these are not interchangeable the supply is always on the inside and you can install this radiator uh, either way so this part might be on the left side it depends which way you install it because like I said before, it has a front and back panel, so it's interchangeable. So if you're looking to install one of these, you're gonna to wanna to know of all the piping configuration options that you have. So that's what I'm gonna go over in the second half of this video. And I'm gonna start with the one that we recommend the most because we think it makes the most sense and that's the home run uh, dedicated piping method and I'll explain it now. So this method offers multiple advantages. So first is that it's very simple. There's no special consideration for pressure drop, uneven temperature distribution, complex piping, or balancing needed. It's pretty easy zoning too. A single manifold can combine several radiators into zones, allowing for individual temperature control in multiple rooms with different heat loss factors. And lastly, what's good about it is that it's cost effective because you don't need as many radiator accessories like thermostatic heads or bypass valves or anything else you can think of if you've installed stuff like this before. So if you go with this method, here are the products you're going to need. First is a supply and return manifold with 24 volt zone valves or actuators. And our SSM or BSM series manifold with two wire or four wire actuators would work. Alternatively, you can go with a pair of copper headers with standard 24 volt zone valves. Next, you'll need a 24 volt thermostat for every room where radiators are installed and any brand or style would work for this. Lastly, you need a zone valve control, such as the Taiko ZVC series, which will act as a hub for thermostats, zone valves, and circulator pumps. 
So the next piping method I want to show you is a one pipe system with a bypass valve like this. So this bypass valve right here allows you to take a one pipe system and connect your supply and return line with the same pipe. So this is required only for one pipe systems where the outlet return piping for the first radiator directly connects to the inlet supply of the next radiator in line. The valve has an adjustable bypass which allows to distribute the hot water supply more evenly among multiple radiators in the room. Diverter valves are recommended when you have a one pipe system and you don't have Venturi T's and they're also recommended when uh, balancing the radiators is necessary. For example, if the room has many possible different sized radiators and it is necessary to adjust the hot water flow so as to equalize the heat output. This chart shows the circuit flow in a one pipe system that uses five bypass valves. As you can see here, as each bypass valve is added, it yields a lower circuit flow in terms of gallons per minute. So there's a dedicated home run method, then there's the one pipe system with diverter valves, and next I want to show you a two pipe system that you usually use for bigger installations, like for a commercial installation with a lot of radiators, and I want to show you that now. The system is pretty straightforward. You have a supply pipe, a return pipe, and a pressure bypass valve that prevents excessively high head pressure by allowing flow from the supply piping directly to the return piping. Option 5 is a bit different than option 4 because it's a reverse return system, and this just means that the supply water returns from the first radiator last to the pressure bypass valve. So by the time it gets around to the pressure bypass valve from radiator one, it's cooled off because when it hits the first radiator in the beginning, it's at its highest temperature. And in option four, the supply piping returns right away after going through radiator one. So once it returns to the bypass valve right in the beginning, it's at a very high temperature compared to option five. So if you decide to do the full installation, I hope you have a better understanding of what sort of piping system you want to do and how to hang it. The hanging is the easy part, but picking your piping system is probably more important. And if you go with PEX, then uh, I should remind you to use oxygen barrier PEX or PEX out PEX. And always add an air eliminator so you get those air bubbles out of your system to keep this from aging. Because as you know, the oxygen just breaks down any metal parts in your system along with your boiler. So if you want to watch my video before this, I go over the technical specifications of these radiators. So if you're looking to purchase one, you'll have a way better understanding of what you're getting. And if you like the video, subscribe and share it if you can, because I want to grow this channel a lot more.